Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report, and we are back with Harley Schlanger, who's back from his trip. Uh, Harley, we have a lot of important topics, and uh, it, it's remarkable in a sense that the uh, the bailout, which is what Obamacare is of insurance carriers, they're laughing because if people knew exactly what they were going to get for insurance, if this so-called sign-up was were operational, if you think that Obama's popularity, which has dropped in the 30s, is bad, how about down to the single digits? Because once people realize just how horrific this is and how many billions, hundreds of billions of dollars have been bailed out to the insurance carriers because they're infested with the same derivatives market, people would be up in arms. We would literally hear the the whiz of the sharpening of axes and the guillotine blades would be out. We would literally have the the, the raiding of the Bastille would occur again because well, Obama look, look. and these, these company executives are getting away with murder, literally, and they're killing people now. I estimated that from all my experts that I've contacted, 200,000 doctors will quit in the first six months and 800,000 nurses and, and co-professional tech, technologists. That will mean that we'll have a system that's overloaded with people that don't have insurance at all or inadequate. A quarter of the population will not even be able to afford the new insurance with the high deductibles. And a lot of people, if they do have health problems, will go bankrupt. This system is terminal. This is a terminal event to the American economy and the American people, and it literally is a death knell. It's a genocide healthcare plan. This is not socialized medicine like Canada or Britain, which is as bad, you know, I call hangnail medicine at the speed of light, but it's a hell of a lot better than what we have. What will happen is Obamacare is the worst health care plan in any country in human history. This makes the Soviet Union and China look like a, a child's garden party. It's ridiculous. Well, let me give you an example just from uh, two things. One is a, a personal uh, view of this, because I have a small company here in, in Houston, with a, which is the basically distributes LaRouche literature. And we have people who go out every day, you know, drive out into different locations to get out literature. We have meetings. We do work on the phone. Uh, and, and some people are familiar with us because they call in our offices and we're there to talk to them. But we, we don't pay very well because we're basically just trying to survive. But our company now has a situation where the only option we have to insure people as a company, because we're small, and this is in Texas, is about $1,100 a month uh, per person with a $10,000 deductible. Now, wow! So the, the, this is what's this happening. people that are basically getting minimal wage or less. Yeah, it's a, about minimum wage. Now, if we yeah. were to say to people, "Okay, you can go and probably get a better deal on the individual, and maybe get a subsidy," uh, they're still going to be paying out of pocket about four to five hundred dollars, but they're still going to have a ten thousand deductible, the so-called bronze plan. Yeah, well, actually, actually, people, the number I hear is that it's anywhere between ten and twelve thousand. Is what I've heard, depending on the state. Well, and there are other out-of-pocket expenses. Uh, I have one prescription that I take, and over the last five years, it had dropped to a, a manageable level per month, and now it just tripled in price on November first. And I asked the pharmacist what happened, and he said Obamacare. So, you know, the point is that the insurance companies, the hospitals, the for-profit hospitals are all taking advantage of the fact that you now are forced to buy insurance. You're a captive and, audience now. You're a captive by, by government edict because they called health care a, a tax. And secondly, they've now written exemptions that their that they're manipulations of the market and exemptions to various corporations cannot be contrived as a federal manipulation using uh, their federal money to, in order to manipulate the market. Uh, there are already laws against that, but Obama has excluded in the, uh, by executive order all their manipulations of the so-called marketplace to around Obamacare, it's just, it's just obscene. It, it completely nullifies the Congress. It makes the Congress vestigial. Well, there's a, I mean, most people in Congress didn't read the bill. That's the point. But there's a, uh, an article in Forbes magazine on October 30th, which said that the administration knew years ago that up to 93 million Americans who had insurance policies would have to give them up under the Affordable Care Act. Now, of course, Whoa. this shows that Obama lied when he said that you can keep your plan. They already knew that wasn't the case. Then the administration changed their line to say, well, it's the insurance company's fault. Then they changed their line again 
to say, well, uh, you will be able to get better plans because of this. But they didn't point out that in most cases, the plan you have will be replaced by a more expensive one. Now, for a small section of the population, it will be the same price or maybe even a little less. But for many people, you figure out of the 93 million ultimately who are going to have to change policies, let's say half of them. And that's a, a, a very low number. But half of them have to get more expensive policies. Then you add on the 20 to 30 million that Obama said would ha- do not have insurance but would have to buy it. You're talking about the biggest bailout of insurance. It makes the AIG bailout of 183 billion look minuscule. Right. You're talking about a couple trillion dollars over the next five years in bailouts for insurance. Now, then you add to that the so-called Medicare savings. And the reason they're saving is so-called cost-cutting, which they say they can do because of the larger numbers of people who are insured. But they're not making more things available to larger numbers, which is the way you cheapen the cost. They're restricting the numbers of people that can use the new technologies. And so prices are going up in pharmaceuticals. Prices, there's no restriction of price gouging. Right, so they, they didn't control costs before they brought in Obamacare, which they need to have a price control commission like they do in Canada. They, uh, they, they didn't control malpractice lawsuits, which are insane. They didn't control the cost of medical supplies or equipment, which are insane. And yet, the insurance carriers can gouge the hell out of the public now that they're captive because if you don't buy, you literally can come under the gun of ever rising penalties. And a lot of people say, well, I'll just pay the penalty. That might be okay the first six months or year, but those penalties are going to get so horrendous and but, they can reach you in your bank thing. account. Yeah. Here's the other thing you pay the penalty, but you still don't have insurance. Right. And so there's no insurance. Now, look, the other thing, one of my associates compared this to TARP the uh, Toxic Asset Relief Plan, the original bailout, and said this is much larger than the original bailout and the four stages of quantitative easing to the banks. So what we're seeing is a commitment of this administration to continue to bail out the financial looters and predators at the expense of the working people and the formerly working people of this country. And what it means on top of that, as you know very well, is that the most vulnerable people, the seniors, the people with uh, chronic illnesses, the disabled, and the poor are being tossed tossed into a rubbish heap of useless eaters that are not going to get covered, and they're going to die much more quickly. Yeah, this is really uh, pretty awful. I mean, and people don't understand that. Uh, and we, yesterday we had an interesting discussion with Lowell Ponte that Obamacare, just the stress of it on people, is going to precipitate cancers, heart attacks, strokes, and death, premature death. But a lot of people are going to lose their specialists with an unstable health condition. A lot of people are not going to be able to afford to continue the drugs they take. They're going to try to cut them back themselves. The only only good news in all this is that the one person who might lose their job over this is Obama. Well, Obama needs to lose it, but I I couldn't believe the nerve of Sebelius that says, I take all responsibility, but she's not going to resign. He says, I take all responsibility, but it really wasn't our fault. I'm thinking I mean, this, is, uh, this is like kind of a new speak, a new political speak of I take all responsibility, but there's no consequences. Or the, the yes, the uh, well, maybe we did know, but we didn't know. Or Obama saying he didn't know anything. He doesn't know anything about anything. In other words, he's a, I mean, basically he's admitting I'm a fool, so I'm not responsible, even though I'm the president. He's a face. He's a front man. He's the one who has chosen to push this stuff through. And look, we can pick this up after the break, but there are huge splits appearing inside the intelligence community, the military community, because the Russians and the Chinese are making it very clear that even though we didn't bomb Syria, they see the U.S. posture in Eastern Europe and in Asia and in the Middle East as a danger to their countries, and they're preparing for the possibility of war. Welcome back, and the uh, 
primary articles we have to discuss today are Glass-Steagall or mass genocide. This really is. Uh, if Obamacare is brought in, it's the end of America financially. And by the way, this is a controlled demolition. This is a, uh, a policy, a technology used by progressive communist corporatists, which is what Obama is, to deconstruct America financially so it becomes a paralyzed nation, then fit to be integrated into a global order where basically everyone's a slave with a biometric currency, either a tracker chip that you have to carry or an ID tag or God knows what, even perhaps an implantable chip. That's where this is all going because Obamacare does have, within three years of the March 2013 implementation, it has a provision for the Health and Human Services Directorate to actually force a chip in biometrics. People don't realize Obamacare is doing a job. It's going to cut the capacity to provide medical care with an increasing population, an aging population, and the asymmetric development of military strategy on war games to deter the U.S.'s policy, which is to arm Israel to the teeth, but no way restrain Netanyahu and Lieberman from attacking Iran, which will start World War III. No policy in terms of its arming to the teeth. Mr. Abe, the crazy uh, Japanese prime minister, whose Abenomic crazy policies combined with his military strategy, they just launched the largest naval ship outside of an aircraft carrier since the Second World War from Japan, the Japanese are on a war path. They are going back to basically uh, shogun politics, uh, which was what caused the their alignment with Germany in the Second World War. What's going well, on was, right now, that, the that policies are... That, that was partially yeah. brokered by the British going back to the First World War. But look, well, of course me, it was. Let, let me bring up something that I think also is very significant to take a look at, which is that over this last weekend, we had a conference in Los Angeles, and we had speakers from China, Japan, Thailand, uh, uh, India, and in each case, what they said is that they are looking, they are hoping that the United States will return to the traditional policies of the United States, because otherwise they fear war. Now, one of the top economic think tankers of the Chinese government gave a presentation and said, look, there's no reason for war. We have the potential now for this new Silk Road. And I, I just want to point this out. This is the head of a think tank of the Chinese government said that Mr. Lyndon LaRouche is the author of the Silk Road policy, which is now the policy of the Chinese government. So when people say, well, LaRouche, you know, what's his influence? Well, here's a guy who's a top official in China praising LaRouche. Now, at the same time, the Chinese are saying we want to cooperate, and they have to because it, the, the collapse of the U.S. economy is creating an even bigger crisis for them. But what the Chinese are seeing is the Asia pivot, the air-sea-land battle strategy that Obama is adopting, which is a forward deployment of so-called ballistic missile defense, aircraft carriers, as you mentioned, the rearming of Japan, which, of course, no one in, in Asia can tolerate. Uh, what the Chinese announced over the weekend is something that's been known for a while, but they chose to leak it to the Washington Post, that they have advanced submarine deployment capable of an asymmetric second response in case of an initial U.S. attack on China. Yeah, in other words, they can deploy them a few hundred miles off our coast and in seven to ten minutes take out Los Angeles, San Diego. They can reach every uh, city. Yeah. Every city. And this is in the Washington yeah. Post on Friday and Saturday. Now, why right. are they making it public now? Because they know there are people in the United States, including members of our military, the Joint Chiefs of Staff, and the intelligence community, who recognize that Obama is a lunatic. Right. Who are no longer committed to defending the Obama policies. And they're trying to say to them, you guys better do something about your president and your policy, or we're going to be at war. Now, I'll just add one other thing to that. Uh, I have, from some of my associates in Washington, reports that people who are very close to Secretary of State John Kerry and Secretary of Defense Chuck Hagel are saying to Hagel and Kerry, if this keeps up, if this Obama policy keeps up, you'd better get the hell out of office or you're going to be blamed for the catastrophes coming. Right. And so what we're seeing is a distancing of some of these top officials from the president. Now, what needs to happen is that distancing has to happen in the Democratic Party. And let me give you a sense of some of what's going on. 
There are three Senate seats now held by Democrats that will likely be lost uh, through retirement uh, in 2014. That's Montana, uh, that's uh, South Dakota, and um, what's the other one? There's one other one that they don't think they can win. Then there are four seats where the incumbents are going to run for re-election but are unlikely to win. Pryor of Arkansas, Landrieu of Louisiana, Hagan of North Carolina, and Begich of Alaska. That's seven seats. If the Democrats lose seven seats in the Senate and the Republicans hold their seats, you're going to end up with a Republican Senate. Now, yeah. to me, the danger of that is that the Republicans are not an opposition party. They're a Me Too party. They're an austerity party. They're a corporatist party also. Right. And if, the, if you have one party controlling uh. both houses, they will work with Obama, who's willing to work with these guys in, in eviscerating what's left of the economy. Right. We're finished as a nation. Yeah, in other words, it'll be the opposite of what you think. In other words, if the Republicans take over the Senate, Obama actually wants to do the worse than what even the Tea Party wants to do in terms of austerity fascism. But people don't see it that way, uh, except they're starting to get the idea that maybe he's that way. But the Republicans think if we can only get the control of the Senate and Congress, Obama will do everything we want, and we won't even have to take the flack, because as he finishes off his term, we'll put in a Republican as president, and then we'll have a real fascist uh, state which is what I see coming next. I see a real fascist state following Obama, a backlash that's going to get very extreme. It'll be like the Fourth Reich. Well, that's exactly where we're headed right now. That's exactly the, the danger. And you know, how do you get out of that? Now, the fact that we're seeing some breaks in the political parties is, is interesting. But the problem is that unless you get a uh, shift in the population, that is, people no longer tolerate this, uh, then we're not going to survive. And, you know, the I, I just want to summarize these two points. First, on the health care. This is not about health care. It's about an insurance bailout and a genocidal policy for people who are supposedly insured. On the banking situation, there's no recovery. The only financial stability is based on continuing bailouts. If you didn't have the bailouts, the major banks would collapse. And so the president is working with the Federal Reserve to make sure that Wall Street's biggest banks and the European largest banks get constant flow of fresh cash from uh, the Federal Reserve and the Treasury at the expense of any government program or any credit for small business and smaller banks and so on. Now, exactly. And since that's not enough, they've now moved to the point where in Europe, they're saying they're going to go with the bail-in across the board. They have? Yeah, Draghi said, don't say it publicly, but Osmussen, who's a, on the European Central Bank, said we have no choice but the bail-in. Which is 17 to 30 percent of everybody's assets, including the value in your home and your pension funds, bailed in to make the bank solvent. Wow. Welcome back. Uh, that's pretty shocking news. So please repeat that, Harley. And I'm still sitting here, and I'm just kind of like I had this cold shiver come over me. Like it's almost like somebody on death row when you hear the voice down at the end of the concrete hall. It's time, and you have to walk down with the chains on your ankles and your hands, and they know they're going to attach you to the, the to the bed where they give you a lethal injection, and you know you're going to shake and choke on your own sputum as you die. Well, that's what they're doing to America. That's what they're doing to a great deal of the population of Earth. And if they start this process, it's going to kill hundreds of millions of people. And remember that the, the Lombardi financial collapse precipitated the Black Death. It didn't happen the other way around. People need to understand that the decimation of the population in the 14th century was caused by bankers. Well, and look at some of the programs that are being cut now. That If you start cutting medical care for poor people, if you start cutting nutritional programs such as food stamps and say that, well, people have to rely on private charity, when in fact the charities are all saying we're not getting enough money, when you start having these kinds of things occur, you hasten the degree or the, the speed at which diseases mutate, at which they spread, 
Uh, well, and, your public and you health combine, goes to hell. And you combine that with Fukushima, where there's no action by our government, because we're in the tailpipe of Fukushima. And as America, literally, remember now, the fall of the Soviet Union was tied directly to the Chernobyl disaster. People don't know that. They don't realize that Chernobyl was one of the final straws that broke the camel's back of the so-called Soviet Union. That's happening well, right think, now. But I, I think the, the other thing to look at, and this is really where you see the problem, is this question of the lack of an alternative uh, in leadership. You know, the fact that everybody in both parties sounds the same on these things. They're all oh, yeah. saying we have to have austerity. Now, why don't they look at the countries that have implemented austerity and realize that in these countries, what's actually happened is that the situation has gotten worse. It's well, that's like telling somebody worse. that you got bad circulation in your foot because you're diabetic, so what we're going to do is we're going to compress your arteries with this dressing to make sure you have no circulation to the leg because we don't want it to get worse. And, of course, the leg goes in gas gangrene and you die of sepsis. So this is the kind of craziness that's happening. Austerity fascism contracts the credit for business, contracts the 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 money to actually run a healthcare system, infrastructure, clean water, food, air. It actually chokes off the population. It literally is a form of genocide. It's a financial form of genocide. Is what they're doing. Well, and then you add to that that they're they're uh, cutting back on. Uh, the food inspectors were getting more food from other countries that don't have the same quality control that we have. And, and what you're seeing is a very, very significant shift in the minimal protection that we have in a modern society. Now, that's when you start seeing death rates spiral. And, you know, I think the, the thing that most Americans, but most Americans are still in a, in a bubble, in an illusion. You know, they watch football on Saturday and Sunday, Monday, Thursday. They, they, uh, you know, even people who don't have checks coming in for work anymore still figure they can get by, whether it's Social Security or, or uh, Medicare or, or Medicaid. Or, you know, people think they have some kind of personal escape. And there's no personal escape when you have a breakdown of society. And the biggest problem that, that Lyndon LaRouche has been discussing is that it's bad enough that we have an economic collapse and we have a traitor like Obama in the White House. The worst thing is that the average American doesn't want to think about it. The average American well, you know, wants to be left alone. Well, here, here's what I say, and I'm going to say this on a spiritual level. I believe that our nation has a death wish. The death wish is like the pimple on the top of the giant abscess in our body politic that has two parties, as I mentioned before, both of them wolves, telling the sheep that we're going to argue over recipe cards for how to make dinner, and the sheep are braying in the, in the pen wondering whose recipe card system is going to win when both of them read at the top of the recipe card austerity fascism, genocide, Obamacare, and population reduction. And people don't get it. They don't realize it doesn't matter no, they, if it's Republicans or Democrats. It. They don't get it. They don't get it that that they they don't get that the Tea Party are a bunch of nut Kate nut balls. They don't get it. Obama's a nut ball. They don't get it that Bonner is not even rational. I mean, he literally lost the ball in the middle of the court when he's ready to put the, through the basket. I mean, these people are disgusting. Mr. Orange spray on tan Obama Bonner, and at the you same time we got Obama. The, Jerry, the Jackie Mason's making jokes about this guy being a maniac, and the fact is that I've seen people in psychiatric wards in a posy jacket in a locked room in a padded cell that don't get day passes that are more rational than Obama. Well, and the problem is that people now are beginning to get a good whiff of this. I'm, I'm not just talking about your listeners already, because they listen to you. They already yeah, the general population are starting to realize the stench is these letters yeah. that are arriving, that their insurance is canceled. The stench is sticker to, shock. They're starting to realize that they've been lied to and they've been had. Now, the problem then is it's a big step between recognizing that you're the target of an operation and coming up with a strategy to reverse it. Because a you lot of the people why, then... Do you, you know the reason why? It's because of self-hatred. Americans basically hate themselves. They don't want to think of themselves as stupid or dupes, but they are. 
I, I don't think it's so much self hatred as it is a kind of brainwashing which says you can't do anything. Well, that's not, that's part of it. They don't want to be embarrassed about the fact they've been so taken by this guy, that's who's a basically a late night also, a late night TV host who actually pretends he's a president and thinks he can talk his way out of almost anything. But they also have been conditioned by the fact that our country has been going downhill for 50 years. You know, if you think about it, someone who was born in 1970, who's now 43 years old, has never seen the United States with the kind of robust economic growth based on physical production that we had in the 50s and 60s. They don't know the country that had factories that were working and farms that were uh, improving uh, productivity every year without going to frauds like gen genetically modified uh, seed and things of that sort. Exactly. They, they haven't seen a president since John Kennedy who stood up against Wall Street. We've had a 40-year, actually it's a 50-year, in two weeks it's 50 years since Kennedy was killed. Our right. nation has had a net decrease in physical production per capita over that 50-year period. And yet we've had, on some level up until 2008, an apparent increase in incomes based on, on funny money and bubbles. But since 2008, even the funny money has disappeared, and then there's been a decline in the standard of living. Now, if you're 40 years old or 30 years old, your expectations are, do you think things are bad now? Wait six months. Especially yeah, exactly. And if you're 20 years old, your adult life has been shaped, or 25, your adult life has been shaped by two terms of Bush and two terms of Obama. So, right. And Boehner and Pelosi and, and Reid and McConnell. So you have no idea that there could be political leadership that could be trusted. Yeah, and so, these guys are, are like the political walking dead. Yeah, you don't need to make zombie movies, just show C-SPAN. <laughs> Exactly. It's it's so crazy. And the fact is, people that are my age, 61, people that are even 51, they look back and they say, this is not America. And now the young people, we call them millennials, they're part cyborg. They now have a bent over posture, texting across the table, not talking, somehow thinking that if, if only they can distract themselves in the latest video game called Call of Duty or something else, or the latest blockbuster movie or Get Pizza, Everything's kind of going to be okay. So they communicate. They can't even communicate. That relationships right. are based on Facebook and Twitter. You know, there, right. there's there's a a, a lack. There's got to be a cyber. There, there's got to be a cybernetic interface. Is what you're saying? But Rather there, than a direct. Yeah. There's a lack of human depth. You know, if you exactly. think about the great periods of, of development in world history where you had poets, where you had music, where you had writers who communicated something profound about the nature of man, we don't have that now. Yeah, what we have is the draining of the soul to the cybernetic web. So that two ounces that used to be considered the, the mass of the human soul is now gone into the internet. Welcome back, and uh, apparently we have basically, you know, there's a lot of pretty bad news, but there's action that people can take, and that's why I have you on the program regularly in LaRouche Foundation, because you talk about concrete things like we need to, we have our Association of American Physicians and Surgeons in Supreme Court filing suit now against Obama changing specific charter line items in the so-called Unaffordable Care Act. We have the still gone, uh, not resolved cover-up of Benghazi. We have the mass genocide of Obamacare that's killing people now and frightening people basically probably having premature strokes and heart attacks over the sticker shock of having no insurance. We're going to have a mass exodus of doctors, and if they haven't left yet, as they say, once they do fix up the health system so people can register, then the storm literally is going to hit the fan, and people are going to realize just how awful it is. It really... It's one thing to not sign up when you're signed up and find out what you really get, which is not only a pig and a poke, but it's basically a death sentence and a bankruptcy sentence. And then our foreign policy is so schizophrenic. On the one hand, we go and support, with, through Obama, Muslim countries, like November has been Muslim Appreciation Month, 
we support the Muslim Brotherhood even against the Saudi Arabians who pulled uh, Mohammed Morsi and now there's going to be a Supreme Court trial we cut the funding off to these for the Egyptian military who's going to honor the treaties with Israel and we now arm Israel to the teeth so they can actually without our control the Joint Chiefs do a nuclear attack on Iran that will precipitate World War III it's not surprising that Russia and China are having fits. Well, let me let me take up this question of what people can do because I sent you uh, one of the links, uh, an initiative taken by a doctor in Pennsylvania, Dr. Mark Shelley, who's a family physician who finally said he can't take it anymore, and he established an organization called Doctors Against Murderous Obamacare. And what he decided to do in, in working with us is not merely uh, criticize this point or that point, but, but identify the fundamental problem with Obamacare. It's out to murder you for the sake of, of bailing out insurance companies and HMOs. So Dr. Shelley has initiated this. He's done some press. Uh, I mean, maybe you'd like to interview him sometime uh, early mm. next week. Yeah, I've already contacted him to actually get back to me. Yeah, I'm, uh, and I think I will. We have, of course, our, our doctors, the Association of American Physicians and Surgeons, who are filing federal suit. We're the only uh, association that's doing that, by the way. These other yeah, so organizations are, are are doing well, a lot of PR are stuff, groups, but we're actually yeah, doing federal lawsuits. Now. There are groups moving, and so this is one example. Now, the other example is that today uh, I got a report from our organizers in Washington, D.C., who were out in front of the um, the uh, subway station right near the Congress, and three senators came up to us, three people that we hadn't talked to much, and they said, you know, you guys have been talking about Glass-Steagall. I think it's about time we took this up. And they wanted to, they actually stood there and discussed. This is three senators talking to LaRouche organizers out on the street with their signs, with their pictures of Obama with a Hitler mustache, saying, uh, impeach Obama, uh, then, then let's get back to producing, or something like that. So we had, we're in the fight on this Glass Steagall issue. Now, when I, I just came back from Europe, there are five bills in the Italian Senate for Glass-Steagall. There's a fight going on in Switzerland where the parliament actually voted for Glass-Steagall, the government rejected it, and now there's going to be a popular referendum, and if that wins, and right now it's about 40%, 40% in the polls, imagine in this, the Swiss banking canton, the center, the gnomes of Zurich as they're known, imagine if you had a Glass-Steagall bill there. Uh, and yeah. UBS, the Union Bank of Switzerland, is saying, oh, we don't need Glass-Steagall because we're writing down our bad debts. What they're doing is they're doing what Enron did. They're forming something called a special investment vehicle, putting all their bad debt in it, and then asking the government for money so they can start selling stock in it. So, Yeah, it, it's basically another bail-in by, the, by taking government, by the OPM, other people's money. Yeah. What will happen, of course, is if Switzerland doesn't put Glass-Steagall in, their days of doing any financial investing or banking that's going to protect people's assets is over. So they they, anybody that. who has two clues, they, then they should know that, that's the end of, quote, the Swiss banking system. But the fact is that rationality doesn't continue. It's like somebody that decides to take, let's put it this way, let's consider Obamacare and the bail-ins and all the other derivatives markets as a, analogous to the Russian drug crocodile where you take it and you start to get gas gangrene, your fingers and your hands fall off. And your tissues literally literally blow up and then literally slough off so you see bone and muscle and ligament. That's what's happening financially because of the derivatives market and these other things that are going on. And if they don't bring in Glass-Steagall and they don't don't impeach impeach Obama, uh, 2014 is going to be an absolutely horrific year. Well, there are three other places in Europe where things are happening. One is in Austria, where the head of the central bank, Novotny, came out yesterday and said, how can you be talking to us about bail-ins? Why would anyone keep money in a bank or save money if you're going to steal it? Then you have in France, while Hollande is acting Mm -hmm. like an idiot, uh, there's a, a bill being drafted that will come up in the French parliament. Now, the other for Glass-Steagall. Now, the other thing in the French Parliament is that the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, is trying this idea of a 10 to 17 percent 
what they call one-time special tax, where everybody who has money in an account, no matter how much it is, will be taxed 17% of that to be written to the government so they can pay down government debt. Now, the, first of all, if you believe that it will be one time, you're crazy. But this is the kind of it's like it's, that it's like believing that it's like believing that uh, that that uh, Dracula will come to your window and ask for blood only once. It will not come back. Don't worry. Yeah. Only come once. No, no the, so, Dracula so will you, be back in the next full moon. So, so you have these really insane ideas, mm -hmm. and what are they? Why do they have them? Because they don't want to face the fact that the system has melted down. Our existing transatlantic financial system is rotten to the core. And the core of it is the 16 so-called too-big-to-fail or too-big-to-jail banks. Now, if yeah. we don't put them out of business or reorganize them at least to break them up, if we don't do that, then the on-rushing Holocaust will be our own fault. And so people can work with us to insist on Glass-Steagall, to demand Glass-Steagall. Look, people like Mike Lee, the senator in Utah, who tells us he likes Glass-Steagall. Well, why hasn't he signed on yet? Get on his case. Uh, Rand Paul is, is open to discussing it. If Rand Paul and Mike Lee became Republicans who crossed over and, and signed on to the McCain-Cantwell-Elizabeth Warren bill, we'd have some enormous momentum. What about Richard Shelby from Alabama, the anti-Wall Street head, uh, Republican, uh, uh, the minority head of the Senate Finance Committee? He know, he's told us Glass-Steagall would work. So why doesn't he put himself forward with it? The, we've got to have your listeners on a total, and I'll use this term just to express the fanaticism that I think has to go into it, a total jihad to get the Senate to move on Glass-Steagall. Every state that we have listeners listening to what I'm saying, call up your senator once, twice, ten times. Send them material from LaRouchePack.com. Get them mobilizing because it's the only way we're going to win this fight. And I assure you, if we get Glass-Steagall, Obama will go into a Rumpelstiltskin mode and probably end up disappearing. Yeah. Him, yeah, exactly. He'll be like the Wicked Witch of the West and the Wizard of Oz, where the water was poured on her Go and she's melting, melting. Yeah, that's exactly, exactly right. Yeah. So you want to give Obama a meltdown? Get Glass Steagall passed. It's been introduced. It's sitting there. Obama's the main opponent to it. Uh, this is a way. If, if you get Obama out, then you can deal with Obamacare. Because if Obama's impeached or, or resigns. There'll, there'll be very few people who will stand up and, and support his signature policy, Obama. They need, to, they need to start all over again. Uh, I, okay. I propose something that goes beyond the socialized health care. You just need to prove you're an American citizen. You basically make a, a federal and state tax. You get rid of insurance. You get rid of national licensure. You get rid of malpractice. You have doctors paid a salary based on years of experience, training, public service, and research. And you have the primary care doctors run everything, you get the government out of it, you send the money down to each county, the counties control the flow of money, and everybody who's an American gets taken care of. And that and includes workers' done. compensation. Yep. It can be done. done. It can make us compete with the other countries in the world in work comp and manufacturing goods. We would have the auto industry move back from Canada to America. We'd have it move back from India, Indonesia, and, and other slave countries where they make inferior products and toxic food. We'd have our, our food industry come back. America would become America again. Last Eagle is the first step. We'll beat Obama's next. And we need to have a real national health policy 